What's happening people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be doing some Ryzen overclocking, specifically talking about the OC experience on the B350 platform or chipset versus the X370 chipset, because both of them support overclocking, which automatically makes the chipset purchasing decision a bit more complicated for the new Ryzen user than it does the Intel user. For example, if you have an Intel Kaby Lake uh, unlocked SKU, um, for example, and you're wanting to overclock, then Z270 is your go-to chipset. It's kind of a no-brainer. Of course, you could go Z170, but that's last generation. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. So if you're a Ryzen owner, you're probably wondering, can I save some money on a B350 board without sacrificing much overclocking headroom? Because B350 right now is significantly cheaper than a lot of the X370 uh, boards that are currently available. If we put overclocking on hold for a second and just look at the official differences between B350 and X370, we'll see the main differences are really uh, SATA and USB 3.1 Gen 1 support and PCIe bandwidth. X370 has a bit more, a few extra PCIe lanes that allow it to have native support for multi-GPU configurations. Although, quick side note, there are some B350 boards out there that have PLX chips included on them, which allow you to crossfire SLI multiple GPUs, but that's for another topic. Now again, both of these chipsets officially support Ryzen overclocking, but AMD sort of just cuts it off right there. They don't specifically confirm whether X370 is a better overclocking chipset than B350. That's sort of a question that's left into the hands of the manufacturers, the board makers, and and really the sort of componentry or the VRMs that they've embedded onto their main boards. Now we already know that X370 boards are typically more expensive than their B350 counterparts, and this is likely due to the additional features that come with X370, like the, uh, the features that we just discussed, but it's also because of the fluff features that the board makers add in there, like RGB lighting or audio EMI shields or those steel reinforced PCI slots that I still don't really see a point for. But for the purpose of this video, let's just assume we care nothing about any of that crap, and we just want to know which chipset provides the better overclocking experience for the end user. So in that case, in order to help us answer that question, we've got two boards that we're going to be comparing today, the ASUS Prime X370 Pro against the ASUS Prime B350 Plus. Our B350 board retails for an MSRP of 100 bucks flat, whereas the X370 board goes for $160, quite a premium if all we care about, again, theoretically, is overclocking. It's worth noting that both of these boards support a maximum DDR frequency of 2666. However, since this platform is still very much in its infancy, we've been ha we've been seeing a lot of issues with motherboards hitting frequencies over 2133 MHz for the memory. So it'll be kind of interesting to see if our X370 board for today has any sort of leverage in that department over our B350 model. Speaking of memory, let's quickly go over the rest of our testing hardware for today. We've got a 16 gigabyte kit of G-Scale Trident Z DDR4 at 3200. Again, this falls outside of the spec of what our motherboards support in terms of speeds, so we'll be again shooting for 2666 instead. Our CPU of the hour is none other than the Ryzen 5 1600X. This is a 6-core 12-thread part with a 95-watt TDP, and I'm looking forward to overclocking the crap out of it today. That'll be paired with a Noctua NHU12S, a GTX 1070 Founders Edition running stock, a 512-gig ADATA SX900 SSD, and a Corsair HX 750-watt power supply. Windows 10 64-bit is our beloved operating system of choice, and rest assured I'm using all the latest Wickle drivers and BIOS versions, that's very important for both of our motherboards today. So on that note, without further ado, I'm going to fire up the B350 board first. Let's change camera gear or camera angles so you can see what I'm doing on screen and we're going to see how far we can take our 1600X first on the B350 chipset. So here we are in the UEFI. I'm going to exit easy mode. We want hard mode. All right, I'm going to start with changing the, uh, the core ratio here. We're going to overclock our core. Let's do four. We already know that it can hit four gigahertz. I'm going to do 4.1. Let's see if we can do 4.1 gigahertz. Oh, sorry. Uh, and the CPU voltage. Uh, okay, so they got this here, the CPU voltage here. Offset. Where's the option for... Interesting. So that's already sort of something to note here, is that there doesn't seem to be a V-Core option within the BIOS on this B350 board. It looks like you can only change via offset. So I guess I guess we'll we'll do that then. Uh, 0.035 maybe. Okay, well it'll, it'll lock us into 37. 0.0375. Um, so maybe I, I wonder if the X370 board allows you to change the V core. Interesting. Unless I'm just not seeing it. Um, okay, let's just let's just boot into the, uh, the OS here and and run a quick stability test. Don't you dare Windows update on me, you son of a bitch. 
Okay, good. All right, let's go back to Tweaker. 42. And let's leave the offset mode here. Let's try this again. 4.2 gigahertz. Can we do it? So I don't know, so I haven't tested this thoroughly with X370 boards, but B350 boards seem to take a really long time to boot, like up to 30 seconds. And I've actually read this on uh, multiple other review sites and stuff that have reported this. It's a really long boot time. We're rocking a pretty fast SSD here with Windows 10 loaded on, so I'm not I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't know if this is something that a BIOS update's gonna fix eventually, but. Okay, we've been at a black screen now for way too long, so I'm guessing our overclock did not take. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset and tweak some settings. Maybe we'll up the voltage a bit and see if that works. Shut up, you damn dags! Those aren't my dogs, by the way. Those are my neighbor's dogs who suck. I have shitty neighbors with shitty dogs. It's not the, it's not the dog's fault. It's the, it's the shitty neighbors. Okay, back in the BIOS. Let's try changing our offset. Let's go point. 04375. Let's see if that works. What? We booted into the OS. Let's run Ida. Is it Ada or Ida? Ida sounds like a dirty southern name. Come here, Ida. My cousin's name was Ida. My favorite name. That's why I married her. All right, starting. Oh, Insta Crash. Insta Crash and Burn. All right, lads, this is where I'm calling it 4.1 gigahertz with an offset of 0 0.0375 volts. I'm gonna lock that in as our stable overclock for the core, and let's let's just mess around with some memories now. Some memories. So let's go ahead and do 2666, which is, the, again, the highest rated speed that the, our motherboard supports here. And then we'll do, uh, let's see, DRAM timing control. I believe the timings here are 14 all around and 34. And we should change our voltage as well to 1.35. We'll start with that. We'll see. Let's see if that takes. Come on. Oh, we booted. We booted. We're booting in at 2666. My lord, it's a miracle. Oh, my lord. Here we go. 1330.6 megahertz. We're going to multiply that by two. This is a dual channel kit, double data rate memory, giving us 2666 megahertz on the memories on the DDR4. So our final score here for the B350 platform is 4.1 gigahertz on the core with an offset of 0 0.0375 volts and a DDR4 frequency of 2666. Hells yeah. All right. Uh, I think on that note, we can go ahead and switch over to our X370 chipset board and see if there is any difference at all. Okay. So here we are on the BIOS for our prime X370 Pro motherboard, and the UEFI looks very so strikingly similar. Let's uh, as as our B350 model. They're both ASUS boards, of course. But hey, look, there's an actual manual option for the V core, so you can just dial in the straight V core just like that instead of being restricted to only setting an offset, as we saw with the B350 board. So while this is in no way, shape, or form, you know, increases your overclocking headroom, it is nice to have these additional features. Just little things like this is is really great. Um, for enthusiast overclockers who will actually take advantage of them. So I'm gonna do the same method though that we did for for the last board. So I'm gonna do still an offset here, uh, 0 0.0375. And we're gonna go to 4.1, let's see, 4.41 on the ratio. And we'll just dial in our timing stuff here. Wait, memory frequency, 2666. Time and control, 14, all the things. DRAM voltage, 1.35, 1.35. And let's see if we can boot with that. Yes, into Windows we go. So 4.1 gigahertz, yes. On all cores, yes. Memory at 1330, yes, again, 2666. We are on board with all of that. We're running at the exact same uh, frequency, both on our core and memory, as we were with our B350 board. I'm gonna run a quick stability test here. Okay, stability test was looking good, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart. Let's see if we can hit that 4.2 gigahertz mark. I think we can. No, I, I really don't. I have no confidence 
if there will be any difference. All right, so we were running stable on that end. Let's go ahead and see, just see. We have to see if we can hit 4.2 gigahertz. Um, maybe not with this offset. Let's do 0 0.04 and see, see what happens. We'll just see what happens. Now, I should mention that the VRM definitely looks a bit more robust on the X370 board than it does on our B350 model. Um, not that that means anything in regards to overclocking headroom. It could have something to do with the, the overall quality or the uh, perhaps the efficiency. Oh, oh, Jesus, Christmas, and we just crashed. Okay. So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it appears that both our B350 and X370 chipsets were able to pull off the exact same settings for our DDR4 and our 1600X. It looks like there's no discernible difference when it comes to overclocking potential between either of these chipsets. The, the real main difference here, other than all the fluff features and if you want to do multi-GPU setups, is the price. And, and there's even more expensive X370 boards than the one we tested today, so I would say put that money towards more important things in your system. You know, maybe buy a faster CPU or, or a faster graphics card, for example. Increase your SSD storage capacity. Don't waste it on a fancy motherboard because it looks super nice and has RGB lighting and things like that. Unless, of course, that's what you're into. But at the end of the day, B350, this really puts a puts a, a minimal argument for X370 after this test. And again, this is not an end-all an end all fact that X370 does not provide better overclocking experiences for the end user because again, I'm only testing, I've only tested these two boards, guys. So um, I wanna make that clear. I'm not saying that X3, you know, this isn't an absolute truth by any means. This is just one man's experience with two motherboards. One man, two boards, you could say. And before this video goes south real quick, I'm gonna close out this video, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what your thoughts are on the whole B350 versus X370 debacle, the debate uh, between the two, and uh, toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It helps me a lot. Also, feel free to subscribe to Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck fifty a month. The first two weeks are free, so you might as well check it the hell out. Nothing to lose there. Um, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, I'm Kyle with Bitwit. Have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.